What's up, guys? This is We Build Wednesday's episode 19, How Google Thinks About SEO. For today's episode, I've brought with Eric, our director of search marketing. I kind of need an expert for this one because we're getting a little bit ingrained in the SEO stuff. And Eric knows it a little bit better than I do. So to start, you guys have probably heard agencies say all the time that they're Google Premier Partners. We are, and we're, we're very proud of that, don't get me wrong. But a lot of times, there's a little bit of a connotation that comes along with being a partner that means that you know what's going to happen with SEO prior to it actually happening. That's a little bit of a misconception. So I'm going to turn it over to Eric here, and he's going to go into that a little bit more. Yeah, and I mean, that's a lot of things that uh, companies go and say, no, we're premier partners, and automatically people think, well, you have the inside scoop. Well, the issue with that is they don't share anything about organic or SEO. You're kind of in the dark when it comes to that. Even when they release updates, they're still not telling us what that update is actually about. So it's very important to know that you know, the only time that we really know exactly what's happening is you follow, think with Google, you follow their search leads on, on Twitter, and you follow some of their uh, knowledge bars online. Uh, and that's really the only time that you're actually getting the inside scoop. So it's basically anyone can get that news. Yeah. And with that, Google recently released a blog post on Think with Google, and the title is something along the lines of how Google thinks about SEO. We're here to break it down for you. So number one on that list is that for big results, you want to start small. Eric, what does that mean for us? Yeah, so when you go into a website, it doesn't mean that you're going to change everything instantly. Start small and see what happens as you start to adjust and change. So four ones that they focus on is fast. Make sure your, uh, your site is responsive, it's fast, and flows quickly. Next one is integrate. You know, you want to make sure that when a user comes to your site, their experience is great. They don't have trouble trying to find out how to contact you, how to call you. Uh, next is being reliable. Uh, make sure that your site is loading right away. You don't have 404 errors, you don't have any other website issues, and make sure you don't get that data story. And Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for those who don't know the data store is as soon as you go to the website, you just get the dinosaur and you got a game. So, yeah. you know, as fun as that is, it's not great for the you know reliable experience. And then the last one is engagement. You want to have something on your site that stands out from the rest, that keeps people coming back. Beautifully designed, it's easy to navigate, and the experience feels natural. Yeah, and for the record, I hope you have this high score and not just complain about our engagement. It's true. Yeah. All right, number two, don't be scared of changes, embrace them. What does that mean, Eric? Yeah, so when search engine comes out and they say, hey, you have these errors on your site, uh, you know, you've got to go into your search console and make sure that you're abiding by these rules. And a lot of people go out and they may use, you know, SEM reps or Ahrefs. Those tools are great, but people are not focusing on, you know, the biggest one of them all is Google Search Console. They're telling you what's wrong with your site, and they're crawling your site, and they're giving you all the information you need. So you really want to focus on this. Uh, and some of the big things that they tell you to focus on is, you know, go in there, and when Search Console says, hey, you have these four fours, you have these AMP issues, go in and fix them. As you fix these, it starts to have a giant increase in your site. Yeah. Just like Google said that uh, in their blog, they even started to fix some of the AMP pages on their site, and they saw a 200% increase just in mobile traffic. And that's huge since now 50% of the traffic coming to your site is most likely to be mobile. So the biggest three things they want you to focus on, implementing structured data. Basically what this means is, it's an HTML code in the back end of your site that gives more information to search engines. So what your site's about, what the images are, you know, when you posted it, who the author is, all of that good information. Next, implementing AMP, accelerated mobile pages. Basically, this means that they're stripping the CSS in your page and it's getting loaded instantly like this. You may notice it when on your phone, you see the little circle on the lightning bolt, that's an AMP page. The next thing is, focusing on those two can help you show more featured snippets, which overall mean increased visibility. Uh, so feature snippets are, you're searching for Portillo's, you find the, one, find the closest one to you, you've got your Google Maps in front of you, you've got images, you've got the knowledge panel. All of that stuff that they grab the consumer's attention a lot faster than just having a link to the site. Uh, and then for those who want to know how to get even more deeper into this, uh, focus on the new URL inspection tool. So yeah. what this is, you know, I can take utech and agency.com, throw in this tool, it says, my page is indexed, yes or no. My page is AMP, yes or no. If your page is an index, it gives you a list of reasons why, how to fix it, and the same with AMP. So it really prepares you with all the tools you need to really get your site up and going, and you know, really not be scared of these changes, because they are trying to help you, you know, move along and try to drive more traffic to the site. See why I brought the expert? 
And again, going back to number one, these are small changes. These aren't things you're going to do at a huge scale all at one time because that, that's going to be a little bit crazy. Yeah, and that's true. And you want to really focus on your analytics and the tablets. When you're going in and you're making these changes, you can make annotations in your analytics. It basically means saying, hey, on you know, January 18th, I fixed game plugins. And then you can focus a week after that and figure out, okay, my traffic increased, my traffic decreased. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see what you did and what, how it affected your you know, traffic like you said. Yeah. And last but not least, the third thing is when possible, you want to consolidate. Yes. So this is the biggest thing we see. Big companies will come to us and say, hey, well, another marketing agency told us to you know, create a website for every single town that we service in or every country we service in. Well, yeah, they may help you a little bit when it comes to localization. The biggest impact is when you have one great website, you're going to have a better chance of getting it. Spreading your content into six websites is only going to kind of hurt you in the long run. Having all that in one easy, fast, reliable, and engaging website is going to drive your rankings up higher, easier for people to find your information. And when you're driving people off to these other sites, you're going to lose them. They're not going to be able to find you back to the website. So stop trying to rank your six websites. Try to rank for one. Yep. Yep. Uh, and honestly, your, your domain visibility is going to be so much higher if you've got everything in one site going together. Uh, if you're trying to split all that authority throughout maybe five or six different sites, they're all going to be you know, down here instead of the one being up here. Yeah. And then you have six websites all trying to rank for probably the same keywords. Well, you just have that one website, all your backlinks, all your keywords, and nice and solid. Boom. Thank you guys. This is Weebo Quantas episode 19.